Hello, I'm Donald Leggett and welcome to Share Views brought to you by London South East. Our guest today is Paul Vonk, Managing Director of Angus Energy, the UK onshore oil and gas production and development company operating in southern England. Angus is listed on AIM under the ticker ANGS. Welcome, Paul. Thanks so much, Donald. And it's been a very busy summer for you. Yeah, absolutely. We've been very busy. OK. Now, uh, let me start with the decision by Jonathan uh, uh, Tidsville Pretorius to stand down as chairman. So what was going on there? What was all that all about? Could you explain that in your own words, please? Yeah, we, were, we did not know what was going on either. What, we, what happened is that we received a tier one form saying that chairs had been moved from Jonathan to a different organization. Well, as a board, we were not aware of this. So immediately, you know, we, 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 we looked into it and said, OK, something strange is going on here. We don't know what it is, but this should not have happened. You know, we've always been very clear. You know, the directors are there to protect the interests of their shareholders. We have a very clear alignment because we're shareholders ourselves of it. But something went on that shouldn't have happened. So we immediately asked our legal advisor, Flatgate, to start an investigation into what went on. And, because clearly uh, in corporate, corporate governance terms, something, oh, it's some, key. It's some, key. Some, something very bad has happened. Yeah, this, this should not have happened. So we asked Jonathan to step down while this investigation is ongoing, which it currently is. Great. And uh, what's, the, you know, what's the position with that investigation? Uh, you know, let, let, can I ask you anything else about it? Well, the investigation is ongoing at the moment. I cannot... We can provide any specific because that is that, that is happening right now. Okay. Jonathan has stepped down, and um, okay. I expect in the next couple of weeks uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll draw a line under it. Great. Okay. And you recently announced the new Nomad. Is there a connection between the the, the new Nomad and uh, uh, the chairman stepping down? Oh no, no, there's there's no connection whatsoever. No, we uh, we changed our Nomad and our broker uh, recently. We switched to Stockdale which we're very happy with. It's like a service provider. You know, we've been working with the, the previous Nomad and broker since the IPO. And at a certain point, you know, you, you need an additional service. The company is growing, and therefore we made the change. There is no connection between uh, what happened with Jonathan and, uh, and switching to Nomad. OK, thank you for clearing up uh, uh, those issues for us. So let's move on to the, the, what I'm sure you think is the news of the day. Uh, you're the Balcom operator. You took over the license at the start of the year. You've um, just had some very positive seven-day uh, flow tests from the horizontal well at Balcom. Tell us all about that. Well, Balcom is, is building up on our strategy because we IPO'd back in 2016, went to the market and said, OK, we want to use the existing assets that we have in southern England and we want to basically unlock the embedded value in there because there's a layer of oil that has been overlooked for a variety of technical reasons. It's called the Kimmeridge layer. And we were the company that drilled the horsehill well, and that flowed for the first time successfully in 2016. But next door, we are 65% owner of the Brockham field, and the Brockham field has got a production license. So that is a very, very crucial point because in the regulatory process in the UK to go from an exploration site to a production site, it's time consuming. Brockham already has that production license. But the wheel basin stretches from south of London all the way basically down to the coast, but the thickest part is in the middle. That's where the Balkan license was. So we announced a transaction back in January uh, where we joined uh, the Cadrilla and the Lucas partnership because not only did they already drill the well back in 2013, it's a long horizontal well with a 1,700 foot horizontal section, uh, that was there and only need to be tested. We only had seven days permission to test it. We became the operator of the partnership in July and we tested it in September. So this is a really short time frame. We did an incredible, the team did an incredibly good job, you know, stayed focused, stayed on budget and the test results, they speak for themselves. We, in that seven day test period, we were able to flow it twice because of the, you know, you want to shut it down, that pressure build up and shut it down and up again. Um, it flowed 850 barrels of oil equivalent the first time and the second time the rate was, uh, close to 1,600 barrels a day, which exceeded our pre-test estimates. So which one should we believe, and how do you deal with the water issue? So two different things. Do we, is, it, is it 800, is it 1,600, and what to do with that percentage of water? How do you get rid of the water? It was actually, at times, more than 1,600 barrels a day, but the well is still cleaning up, because you, only, you, you, you actually need to you know, flow it up. And I think it's interesting, because Horse Hill, they just made an announcement that they were flowing at rates of 700 barrels a day, but they also started off with 500-something. That well is also still cleaning up so you want to you know you you actually want to have more time I wish we had more than seven days unfortunately we didn't 
but that's why we're going to Brockham, and there we are not time constrained, and there we're going to perforate a much larger section than is currently being tested at Horsell. So at Balkum, what the eventual flow rates will be, we, we need more time of it, but these wells would have been commercial at, at much, much lower rates than, 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 than we showed our, these wells are able to deliver. So um, a few days ago, you actually uh, produced some great flow test results. Uh, Horse Hill has just um, produced some uh, flow test results yesterday. It really is looking good for that reservoir. Well, you know, how would you comment on that? I think it's important for investors to realise that this, these are not isolated finds. This is not a, a, a structure here and a structure there. We're basically all testing the same reservoir. So it's the Kimmeridge layer, and inside that Kimmeridge layer you have uh, a, a fractured limestones. That's how we started off with, uh, with Horsell. It's a fractured limestone, but it's actually not a single limestone, it's an all kinds of interbedded layer, limestone, claystone, limestone, claystone. And when we uh, drilled the Brockham well, we used a you know specialized logging tools that could make an image of the borehole in oil base mud. And that showed at Brockham we have 400 meters of Kimmeridge, 200 meters of that is, is like continuously fractured. So we're probably looking at a single 200 meter oil column and we're perforating 200 meters of that to switch it on. And the fractures are exactly what you guys are looking for? That's where you find the oil? That is, that, that is the reservoir, correct. The fractures are containing the hydrocarbons. Correct. And at Horsell, they have now you know, started the, the proper flow test. They did it briefly in 2016, but they're now flowing. And they have a couple of weeks to, uh, to do that. Uh, excellent rates are coming down uh, out of there. Good high quality oil. Brockham is a carbon copy of that well, but it was actually drilled as a Kimmeridge producer. Uh, the Horsell well was never drilled as a Kimmeridge producer. The hole is too big and we used the wrong drilling fluids really to get the best out of the reservoir. Brockham was specifically drilled as a, uh, as, a, as a Kimmeridge producer. But you're learning as you go. That's perfectly normal, isn't it? Uh, correct. And I think we're, 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 we're all benefiting from what we're learning from each other and the well flow results that are coming out. Great. And what are the next, you know, operationally, what are the, what are the next things uh, you need to do? You know, if you were to, you know, next six months, next year, operationally, what, where are you going to be going? What are you going to be doing? Well, we told the market that we're going to switch on Balkan before the end of Q3. We did that. Uh, now we're actually moving over to Brockham. We are finalizing, you know, the contracts with service providers and the, the small details are being set out. We're looking to switch that on literally in the next couple of weeks, um, uh, but definitely before Christmas. And uh, then we'll be in production. We have permit to produce there for a three-year period. But I wouldn't be surprised that if the flow results are as conductive as, 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 as good as they will be, that we might do something with the wells that we have next door, which are currently being used as a water injector and a producer from the Portland. But there's a lot more potential than to also convert them into Kimmeridge producers. Okay. Um, Angus seems to have a good, a good delivery record in terms of uh, you, you do what you say you will, you will do. You've had your issues with Surrey County Council, but you have got, uh, got around those and got over those, and you're now very good friends with Surrey County Council. Um, I've completely um, forgot my question. Uh, let's do that again. Yes, okay, sorry. Not normally me that does this. There <laughs> you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, um, Angus have a very good record for delivering and doing exactly what you say you will do. Um, so is there any particular reason why you think the share price uh, hasn't responded as you would have expected? I mean, you're, you're putting lots of positive news out into the market. Horse Hill is positive news yesterday, but um, I'm, not seeing a, I'm not seeing a surge in the share price as I would have expected. How, 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 how do you explain that? Well, as, as a management team, we can only focus what is under our control, and that is delivery of the projects, growing the company, ensuring the, the, the future stability and growth of the company, therefore the Balkan transaction, and us delivering you know, on the projects as we said we were going to do. Um, so our focus right now is on Brockham. Uh, with regards to share price, I think we can all see in the market there's quite a lot of you know, volatility and, 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 and unrest. Uh, but I, I would not be surprised if the market you know, will turn around and see indeed what kind of value we are currently unlocking from that Cambridge Basin, which is you know, good for the UK, it is good for our shareholders, and um, it's definitely good for us. You're flow testing Balcom, you're set to work on Brookham. Um, where do you think the share price ought to be? And where do you believe the share price ought to be? Well, what I try to do in this situation, I try to, when we speak to investors, I try to 
explain to them the, the economics of these wells. These are these are onshore wells. These are not expensive wells. Um, as soon as we're in production, you know, we're now currently in an you know eighty-five dollar oil price environment. And, wouldn't be surprised that it goes up a little bit more over the next couple of months. People are talking about a hundred dollars uh, oil. I mean, there's a lot of energy peak oil. $100. Yeah, no, no. There's a lot of energy unsecurity right now, and therefore, you know, we haven't invested, you know, properly in 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 the industry for years right now, and and demand, you know, continues to grow, continues to grow. We're we're getting close to 100 million barrels of oil being used per day. So those are significant numbers, and they just continue to grow. So there will be a continuous demand for oil for you know for the foreseeable future. Mm. Um, as unpopular as hydrocarbons are, uh, they, they, they underpin uh, the energy scene for the entire world, don't they? Yeah, no, they, they are a super important piece of our, 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 our energy security that we need. So it, it's not to be underestimated. And shale gas, uh, shale oil from America will undercut that $100 oil, but it's going to take a while because there are, there are pipeline supply issues in the States, I understand. Uh, correct. But even then, there's you know, natural decline rates from all the existing fields. And we haven't had any you know, proper mega fines in, 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 in the last couple of years, last, last, last decennia. But from a, a, a market point of view, just going back to, to our company, it is for each 100 barrels that we produce, you know, at $85 oil, we probably net about $60 because the OPEX and the refinery cost and the transportation cost are then deducted. So each day, 100 barrels a day, make $6,000. That is $2.1 million a year, which is you know, 1.5, 1.6 million pounds a year for each 100 barrel that you produce from the Kimmeridge. Well, we have multiple wells that we can switch on from the Kimmeridge. Uh, and, and they just add up. You, you don't have to increase the size of your infrastructure from a specific pad. And um, that's, that's uh, achievable? You've got the licenses for those different, uh, different wells to produce? At, at Brockham, we have planning permission for six wells. We currently have three wells in place. One of them is, is, is ready to be switched on. The other ones could be converted relatively uh, economically into a Kimridge right. producer. And then you're just generating cash flow and that we can use for future growth and potentially accelerate our business plan. Hmm. Paul Vonk, uh, that's absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much for enlightening us today. Uh, thank you for joining us in the studio. Um, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. Um, and if you found this interview useful, you can subscribe for more interviews like this one on our London Southeast YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us.